I want to talk about ChatGPT and Claude, because as a developer, these are two AI models that I often use, but for entirely different reasons. Firstly, I'd like to say that I'm quite familiar with OpenAI. I was using them way before ChatGPT was released, back in 2020, when they still had models like DaVinci that didn't even have chat features. It wasn't until late 2022, when OpenAI released ChatGPT, that Anthropic also released Claude, and I didn't even notice. It wasn't really on my radar until I started using applications like Cursor, which actually used Claude 3.5. And when I started to notice how good it was at programming, it made me think, what makes this model so special? So in this video, I'm gonna explore the difference between ChatGPT versus Claude, where you might use one or the other and why, especially as a developer. This video will have three parts. First, a plain comparison of things like features, costs, performance, etc. Second, we'll take a look at some real-world coding tasks, how each model performs at both. And third, we'll take a look at non-coding tasks and how the models perform as well. Let's begin. I want to take a look at the different types of models that Claude has as well as ChatGPT because there's a few models to pick from and sometimes picking the right model for the task you're doing is quite important. So for Claude, Anthropic have Claude 3.5 Sonnet, 3.5 Haiku, Opus and 3.7 Sonnet, which is their newest model. Now in terms of pricing, 3.5 Sonnet is the best in terms of performance for price. So it's one that I'm gonna be using for this review. In terms of ChatGPT, they have ChatGPT 4.0, 4.5, 01, and 03. Now it might seem confusing again to pick one for all of these tasks, but again, the best price to performance ratio is ChatGPT 4.0. So I'll be using that to compare as well. Next is the context window, which is pretty important if you're working with code, especially large projects with a lot of files that have functions and hooks being called from other directories. Now Claude has 200,000 tokens, while ChatGPT has 128,000. This is almost twice as many tokens for Claude, which is really putting things into perspective. And it's why applications like a cursor and windsurf often use them as their default, because you're just able to provide more information to that AI and produce better results as an outcome. Of course, using this amount of tokens comes at a price. With OpenAI versus Claude, Claude 3.5 Sonnet comes in at $3 per million input tokens and $15 per million output tokens. Whereas for ChatGPT 4.0, it's $2.50 per million input tokens and $10 per million output tokens. This does make ChatGPT a little bit cheaper, but it does do tasks a little bit different to Claude. So we're gonna take a look at that shortly. When it comes to features though, each one is a little bit different because Claude doesn't have things like web search, image generation, video generation, voice mode, but it does have computer use, which they're pretty good at. Whereas OpenAI, well, they're trying to do everything. And to be honest, they're doing everything pretty damn well. Now to take a closer look at the different types of interfaces. Claude here on the left and ChatGPT on the right look very similar. You've got options to upload documents. You've got a couple of features here on how to use styling or different models. But OpenAI does have a few more options such as search or deep research, which Claude hasn't yet implemented. I've got a small programming prompt I'm going to use here, which is to build a homepage for a developer. I'll enable Canvas on ChatGPT, and Claude automatically has artifacts enabled, and these allow you to create a coding environment with a live preview of what's being built on the side. The first main difference is that the ChatGPT models are a little bit faster, being able to produce out this block of code in just a few seconds, whereas Claude is a little bit slower, so it's still running here in the background while ChatGPT has already completed. Both have a preview that you can enable. So here on ChatGPT on the top right, I'm just going to select a preview to have a look at what we've come up with. And here on Claude, I'm going to do the same. But with Claude, I can actually download the file where with ChatGPT, I can only copy out the code. I have opened both pages here from Claude and ChatGPT. And you can see a significant difference between the first and the second. Firstly, the one from Claude here is definitely styled a lot better. There's a nice text with bolding and gradients, great button use, as well as spacing between different types of elements. Whereas the ChatGPT version doesn't have great spacing or use. It's just kind of like the default of what you would expect. 
Here, even the logo and the call to action on the nav bar is a lot better on Claude versus ChatGPT. Again, you can see how Claude uses SVG icons with colors, while this just isn't happening in the ChatGPT version. When you combine all of this together, you can see why I find Claude to be significantly better when it comes to performing design and coding tasks compared to ChatGPT. Now, I want to take a look at day-to-day -day use of these AI models and how they compare, especially when it comes to doing things like automation, which which I'm often doing in Zapier. While I know things like MCP are pretty popular, I'm still using simple automations that can run in the background without needing to connect up to a desktop application like Claude, which I'll explore in another video. Here on Zapier, I'm gonna set up a quick automation that is gonna summarize our videos for me and then post them on my community Discord channel. Then I'm gonna compare how ChatGPT does this compared to Claude. Here, I'm gonna connect up my YouTube channel and my Discord channel. And here between these two, I'm going to add a open AI model, which is gonna summarize the text and then present it in a postable manner for the Discord channel. The reason I'm starting off with ChatGPT 4.0 for this task is because it's particularly good at these types of interactions and automations. Running a quick test, I can see that it has done a pretty good job at summarizing this text in a way that I can now use to post on Discord. And here's what that looks like. As you can see, it's done a pretty good job and this is what I would expect from ChatGPT. So let's try Claw to see how it compares. What makes life a little bit easier is that I can simply select this open AI one and change the provider to now be from Anthropic and we'll use a Claude for this example. Here I'll fill in all the details like I did previously so that we're grabbing the same sort of things like the title and the description, test out how it does. If I head over to the channel, here's that post from Claude. Now there's a little bit difference, it's longer. It's got things like hashtags, which I don't particularly want, as well as the fact that it says, here's a suggested Discord announcement. While I can definitely refine my prompt, these are all examples of how ChatGPT just is better when it comes to general use. And while I could show you more examples, this should hopefully do. Now the final test. What is it like using Claude versus ChatGPT inside of a coding ID like VS Code, which I don't use as often because now I'm using cursor a lot more. There are two ways that I'm using these AI models inside of the coding editor. First is by just manually selecting them and getting them to complete tasks based on my code base. This actually performs quite well, especially when I reference the right files to be used. Let me show you an example. Here's a small project I'm working on and I want to refactor. I want to change my expanded element IDs to collapsed element IDs. I'm going to use cursor in agent mode and kick off this process. 3.5 Sonnet does a pretty good job at scanning through all the files as well as files I might not have referenced and then updating all the variables as well as the functionality to now work as expanded elements IDs. Once all the changes have been made, I can simply select accept and now my app has been refactored. And my personal takeaway is that I've had pretty good results when using Claude. In comparison, when I switch back and revert my changes and then try GPT 4.0, sometimes I get mixed results. Like in this case here, it tries to overcomplicate or sometimes undercomplicate the solution that's needed. I've had cases where it hasn't even taken into consideration the project as a whole. And while I know that cursor is behind some of the smarts of how this is happening, when it comes to refactoring or trying to add new features, Claude always seems to perform better than ChatGPT. There's one other way that I use these models, and that's with Klein. It's an extension for VS Code and Cursor that allows me to use an AI model of my choosing in different ways to plan out refactors or features and then act to perform those changes. Right now I'm using Claude and it does a pretty good job at scanning through my files and giving me feedback on questions I might have or even for planned features I might want to add. I particularly like that it can even generate these sorts of images to show what the architecture of my store looks like in terms of all the relationships for child, children and elements. Unfortunately, if I try to do the same thing with GPT-4.0, I don't get the same results. Here, it just gives me a brief project summary with all the files and directories, and then it does it again, and then a third time, almost repeating itself. It by no means creates the same sort of an outline as it did with Claude without any images or anything like that, just something high level that really doesn't help me as much as I would like. In my personal opinion of someone who codes almost every day for hours and hours, I've found Claude to be superior over GPT-4.0. Now this might be subject to change as new models arise, but for the time being, it is what I would recommend you try if you haven't already. 
Finally, I'd like to thank Zapier for sponsoring today's video because they're a great solution if you're looking at automating different types of tasks, whether it's scheduling email flows or trying to transform data with Python and AI. There's usually a workflow out there that lets you turn a manual job into an automatic one.